What would be your advice to Oklahoma high school kids, particularly the ones that play at smaller schools? Uh, I think, you know, my advice, it's uh, smaller schools. I, I'm not going to, I would say I'm not going to lie to you. It, it's tough. You, uh, you know, you got to put on some uh, good tape. You got to be coachable. You got to be fundamentally sound. You got to do everything right and then some more. So uh, I would say never get complacent. Always strive to get better. And, you know, for you to make it, you're going to have to do a little bit of work outside of what's mandatory and what people expect of you, you know, and I think, you know, you can be as great as you want, you want to be, but, uh, you know, also you're the only person that can stop yourself. The story of Mason Fine is one that I'm fascinated by, and I believe he's one of the most improbable college football stars that you probably never heard of and probably haven't given a second thought to, but he's once again one of those kids that absolutely positively deserves to have his story told. And I'm using audio from an interview that he performed with me on an earlier podcast to tell this story because I, I just really wanted to get into it and I wanted to backdrop it against the NFL Combine and everything that he has been able to do basically since high school, right? At the NFL Scouting Combine, the likes of Jalen Hurts and Justin Herbert, Isaiah Simmons and Jeff Akuda, Tristan Wirfs and Andrew Thomas are getting after it on cable television. At the same time, right then, others train too. Allow me to draw you a straight line from there to a 5'10 quarterback from Pegs, Oklahoma, who took the full scholarship offer, the only one he received in December of his senior year and flipped it into one of the best college football careers we've ever seen from a quarterback. His name is Mason Fine. And even as his college football career has ended, he has not stopped training to achieve his dream. My weekday schedule, uh, you know, I get up one, I wake, uh, work out early in the morning, get treatment, uh, you know, making sure I'm ready to, you know, hit the weights, making sure my body's ready to run, prep my body running for the afternoon, and then I'll do a lot of speed and, and, and endurance training um, in the afternoons with uh, Coach Womack and his staff at the University of North Texas, and then I'll, I'll throw in the afternoon as well. So about each day, I probably put in around six hours at the minimal. And believe you me, he would rather be at the NFL Combine, but that's nothing new for him. He's going to take care of what he can take care of. It's something I always watched as a kid growing up. And, uh, you know, I've been watching, uh, you know, the guys coming in uh, to the Combine this year on Twitter and uh, keeping with it uh, very closely, just kind of, you know, using some comparison, you know, and looking forward to seeing what numbers they put out there and seeing what they throw on the TV. And, um, you know, I wish I could be there in person and to, uh, you know, showcase my talents. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here in Denton, Texas, and I'm just keeping my head down train and focusing on what I can control. Coming out of Matt Hennessy's Locust Grove program, Fine passed for more than 5,000 yards and 70 touchdowns as a junior. His high school feats were chronicled in terrific detail in the Tulsa world by then world sports columnist John Hoover. But Fine and his dad Dale sent recruiting letters to more than 100 programs over the course of his prep career anyway. He's the best high school quarterback I've ever seen. And I've been doing this for 24 years now. Mason is just special because a lot of quarterbacks can throw, a lot of quarterbacks can run. He can do both those, but he doesn't make mistakes. And he studies the game so much. His 5,000 yards last year was impressive because no high school quarterback had ever thrown for 4,000 in Oklahoma. He threw 5,000. But he threw for 71 touchdowns. And it was this new state record. It was, a, it was almost a national record, everything. But he, he only threw six interceptions with that. That, to me, is what is impressive about Mason as a football player. Just he doesn't make mistakes in the way he runs it, runs it in offense. You know, when he was growing up, you know, throwing the football around out in the yard, you just never really expected. You just wanted him to be to, to be able to throw the ball well, and you know he wanted to play football, and I just wanted to be be good at it. Fine camp at OSU, uh, you know, trying to get a camp at Tulsa, you know, Arkansas State, Missouri State, and it was the same thing over and over. Just you know, too short, too small, too slow, uh, not quite big enough. Played at a small school, 
um, and all those things. Mike Gundy came right out and said later that offering Fine as a preferred walk-on was all he was willing to risk on the kiddo because he was too short. It's no wonder his two favorite quarterbacks are Drew Brees or Russell Wilson. Even North Texas coach Seth Luttrell had doubts about his height, but Hennessy asked his old buddy just to take a look at him. After all, Luttrell was once just an Okie high school kid the outside world thought wouldn't amount to a hunk of dung and Muskogee. And Hennessy wasn't gonna hang his rear end out for just any kiddo. He swore up and down Mason Fine had magic. So whether it was because Hennessy twisted his pal's arm or because he felt a pang of guilt knowing this football-loving state never gets its fair due for the roses it grows from this red dirt, he sent his new offensive coordinator, a fellow named Graham Harrell, down to see about it. And what Harrell found was very grateful and and, and ecstatic about the opportunity that may present itself and he said that's what he liked i liked about a lot about me and and uh and and, there, and really didn't care about how tall i was he didn't come down there with a measuring stick and, and all of that but he did go back to coach trail and said seems like a good kid uh, but he is small it helped tremendously that unt absolutely needed a quarterback you know, during that process, you know, they were trying to get quarterbacks, but they really, all the quarterbacks weren't interested in North Texas. So Harold asked Fine if he would come take a look at what they were building in Denton. Fine probably would have flown there all by his lonesome on the strength of his excitement, but his parents drove him down just the same. When Latrell offered Fine a full scholarship to play quarterback for the Mean Green, he not only accepted, he hit a release valve. His pops couldn't stop grinning and his mama, Tara, cried on the drive home. Why not? The math says a million kids, one million, play high school football each year. Figure a quarter of those are seniors. Now figure there are about 25 scholarships available among 130 FBS teams. Means 250,000 kiddos are vying for 3,250 spots. Means Dale and Tara finds boy had become one of the 0.013% of eligible high school football players to earn a full scholarship to play FBS football. You'd be right to think that he made it. You'd be right to think that he achieved the dream, but you aren't Mason Fine. He was supposed to redshirt that freshman season, and why not? He was buried at number seven on the depth chart, and Latrell had landed on an Alabama grad transfer named Alec Morris, who looked every bit like the guy Fine wasn't, at six foot three, two hundred thirty pounds with pedigree. You can already imagine why Morris was the week one starter, but Fine didn't care. He committed to the work because he learned early: you can't get lucky if you aren't already doing the work. I don't think I'm exaggerating. Um, <laughs> I mean, they had a, you know, Alec Morris transfer from Alabama. They had their backup. Um, they had another uh, another transfer come in. Uh, and they had two that was previously there. So that'd be five. And then me and then the freshman they bought there. So it, I mean, it'd be six or seven when I first stepped up. And um, I mean, I was getting no reps all summer uh, with the, you know, the OTAs and, uh, you know, the team workouts and stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I wasn't getting much uh, reps in with the team or anything like that. So uh, I was pretty far down there. You know, obviously at the time, you know, it was Alec. You know, Alec Morris was getting all the, the, the one reps and stuff like that. And, you know, being a starter, I mean, I mean, I practiced like I wanted to be the starter. I prepared like I wanted to be the starter. But in all reality, I was trying to get a, you know, either, you know, a backup or just really climb my way up up the depth chart and prove myself that I belong here. And, at the time, I heard the plan was really to redshirt and, uh, you know, just put on some weight and, and, and get ready for next year and learn the playbook this year and, and just and get mentally ready. But uh, after fall camp, you know, they announced that I was the backup and uh, um, it's a little bit shocked. To, to, to be honest, um, you know, because I didn't know about the splitting the reps where I'd be, you know, second or third. So I, I didn't know. Yeah. So, I mean, throughout training camp, I think I was just kind of getting more reps uh, day by day. Uh, like I say, uh, controlling what I can control. Uh, I think my first day of like 
uh, train uh, fall camp uh, day one. I think uh, you know we did individual drills. And I think Coach Carroll kind of liked what he saw in the individual drills. So I got uh, one drive with like the second string, and you know we went down there, uh, led him to a touchdown. So I just kept improving each day and. So when Moore struggled in the fourth quarter of the UNT season opener against Southern Methodist, Fine had demonstrated during the summer and preseason camp that he was ready when Luttrell said, go. But, uh, and then, you know, I was great friends with Alec, and he, he helped me out a lot through the process, and uh, someone I look up to to this day, and, um, you know, just the game kind of didn't go the way they, they planned on it, and Coach Luttrell came up to me the beginning of the fourth quarter saying, you want to go in? And uh, without hesitation, I remember my eyes getting real big and saying, well, yes, sir, uh, of course I want to go in, heck yeah. But, it, it, and, you know, it, deep down, I really was just, uh, here's my opportunity. He took the job then, and he didn't give it back for the rest of his career. On his way, he set records. He threw for 4,052 yards and 31 touchdowns as a sophomore. In 2018, North Texas won nine games in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time since 1977-78. He finished his four years at UNT as the all-time leading passer in program history, 12,505 yards, first in passing touchdowns, 93, first in passer efficiency, 140.68, first in touchdowns responsible for, 100. He is the record holder in career completions with 1,039 career pass attempts and 1,655, second in career completion percentage with 62.8% and has the most 300-yard passing games in program history with 18. He owns the North Texas single season record for passing yardage, touchdowns, completions, and pass attempts. When I asked him about his favorite memory from his time at North Texas, he unearthed two. My most memorable game was going to be something more that happened off the field. And that's uh, when I when we traveled up to the University of Arkansas, uh, be my junior year. And uh, the, I mean, the game was special in the fact that you know, it was a power five. It's, it's a team that was in my backyard um, under an hour away to, to have that opportunity. But the, the pictures that my mom showed at, at their little tailgate party of all the all the, the pegs and local Grove citizens that showed up they said there had been around uh 300 to 400 people of people from the area that you know i knew growing up that was there supporting me and uh, you know all my friends were after the game they you know dabbed me up and congratulated me so that that's always going to be really at the back of my mind is going up there and, and then seeing the, the, the terrain and, and being like man this is home like, I'm, I'm right here at home and being able to play a play a play a football game against you know the University of Arkansas and have the opportunity but really just the most uh, memorable moment is just uh, seeing the pictures of all the people that were there and afterwards supporting it. I thought that was just really neat really interesting and really cool. In a population of 813 or just big enough to whip your behind a 50% turnout from a town of 72 miles west it's no small thing. Neither is beating the Razorbacks when you play college football at a place on the way to where you're going. The other memory he gave is known as the drive. With 107 left to play, UNT was down four to UTSA and on their own two-yard line. ESPN gave the Mean Green a 1.7% chance to win that game under those circumstances. The drive now, um, and at this time UTSA was undefeated, uh, really kind of pr uh, predicted to be a heavy favorite to, to win Conference USA West. And, um, and we go in there my sophomore year and uh, against a very good defense. I think that next year their defensive coordinator actually got hired to be a co co defense coordinator in Alabama. Uh, I'm not sure. Don't, don't quote me on that. No, but no, I think no. That, You're right. It's uh, Pete yeah. Golding. And you also yep. had Marcus Davenport was a first round pick at him. Yeah, yeah. And I had Davenport after me all game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a great player, great person, too. We became good friends after that game. And, but, uh, just really, uh, the situation, just, you know, 90, 90, I don't remember, 90 something yards, 97, 99 yards to go with around a minute left with zero timeouts, and we're down by four. And just the way we go down there, and it was cool because a lot of the people already walked out of the stadium. It was kind of half empty. And uh, we go down there and we score. And, and that's really where 
uh, I mean, the, the belief in the program took off. And I don't believe we would have had a great season as a great season uh, if we didn't win that game or just kind of brought a little magic, a little spark to the program. And, and after that, because it was early in my sophomore year, it kind of the program took off and it built up. And, and it was just a really cool, uh, exciting game. And uh, that that would always be in the back of my mind. So when he gets his shot in the NFL, you remember who he is. You remember what that 22-year-old has overcome on a football field. You remember they said he was too short. You remember an FCS coach told him to his face he'd never get a chance to play FBS football. You remember he was seventh on the depth chart. You remember he beat Arkansas. You remember he led the drive. And you remember he's in Oklahoma. I'm not going to say irritating, but when people ask me, oh, XFL something uh, pursues, like, well, no, I'm pursuing the NFL, and <laughs> that's something I've always continued to work on, and, and all I ask, and I've been saying it my whole career, yeah, I didn't get the combine invite or, or anything like that, or, but all I ask is for one opportunity. That's all I ask for, just, so I'm hoping just getting training camp, and I just keep at telling these scouts and these coaches, hey, I just need one opportunity, and I'll make the most of it, so that, that'd be just something to just get out there and something I'm still striving for. So let's just end it on that, I guess. <laughs>